Bam, and there you have it, fam. You got your pandas data frames inside of your SQL database. You're ready to host it to the cloud or hook it up to your Flask app. Finance family, it's your other brother, Adam Gitbags. And today we're gonna be creating a SQL database from a pandas data frame in Python using SQL Alchemy. So first thing we're gonna to need to do is pop open our trusty Google and Google search SQL Alchemy docs. And then this first link here is our documentation. And then up at the top, we wanna to click into installation guide. So if you've never installed or used SQL Alchemy, this is gonna be our basic walkthrough. So the first thing that we need to do here is pip install SQL Alchemy. So you can copy this out and then go over to your Python script and then you can paste it in here. And as you can see, I've already got it installed. Just restart your kernel, you'll be good to go. Now here's our script. All of my scripts are available on my GitHub. I'll put the link in the description so you can access all the code from this video and all my other videos as well. Up next here, we have our pip install SQLite 3, and this should already be installed with Python, and especially if you're using Anaconda. So then we've got a couple of module imports here, OS, Pandas, SQL Alchemy, and then a couple of modules from SQL Alchemy library. We'll get into the importance here of importing this OS OS module because we want to make sure that we're in the correct working directory when we create our database. So if you flip back over to your SQL Alchemy documentations, you can kind of read through it here. And then next, what we want to do is we want to import SQL Alchemy and then we want to test our version. So if you go ahead and copy that and paste that over into your Python environment, you can see that we have SQL Alchemy installed. And that's what you're seeing here in the code. And then next, we're just going to check and confirm our current working directory. Now, when we create our engine object in SQL Alchemy, which we'll get to in a minute, it's going to populate our database file inside of our current working directory unless you specify a directory. So let's just use the current working directory. If you need to change your current working directory, you can just use this code right here. Up next, what we're going to do is I have three lists here. They have six items each, and then we're just going to create some mock data to work with. Now that we've got all of our data in lists, we're going to go ahead and put that all into a data frame and give the data frame some column names, symbol, date, and price. So as you can see here, we have our data frame, we have our symbols here, our dates here, and our prices here, and then our pandas data frame index is all the way over here on the side. Okay, now here's where we get to the fun part. We're gonna get started with SQL Alchemy. The first command is a create engine command. Let's go ahead and find that in the docs. So you can go ahead, flip back over to your SQL Alchemy docs. Now that we've installed it, let's go ahead to the tutorial here, and then there's a bunch of information here you probably should read through, but we can kind of just keep pushing on here. So we're gonna move to the next page after that, and it's gonna give us the imports that we saw from the beginning of our script and then this gives us how to create an engine now the main difference between the code that we see here and the code in the script is we're not making an in-memory database we actually want to have a database file in our current working directory so the information here we're just gonna give our database a name dot DB so that's gonna be the name of our database file so as you can see here we have test app dot DB that's gonna be the name of our database let's go ahead and run this line of code here and then if you run engine, you can see here that it creates this engine object here. Now, if we look in our folder, there is no database. Now, if you read the docs thoroughly, you'll notice that they use something called like lazy loading or something like that, where it doesn't actually create the database until you do an operation. So this next line of code here is gonna get our data frame and then create a SQL table using our engine object. I would definitely recommend Google search pandas data frame to SQL. You you can click into the documentation here and this is going to give you everything you need to know about writing records from a data frame into a SQL database ton of information here check it out they have all the stuff here so I went ahead and I ran that and you can see all the output from the SQL server and you can also see the SQL commands in there as well also you can see our individual entries these are our rows essentially then if we flip back over to our current working directory you can see it's created a file called called testapp.db. So this is gonna be our database. Now that was pretty easy, but we definitely wanna take a look back at the docs just to familiarize ourselves a bit more. So if you come back to the docs and then you move to the next page, then this teaches you all about working with transactions. So first up here is this getting connection header. This teaches you just the basics of running SQL commands. So it's a very basic select hello world using your engine as a connection. You know, it's not really pulling anything from your database. It's just printing to the screen. And then all of this is gonna output in your IPython console. 
Now, as we continue through our documentation here, we can see there's a couple of different ways to send SQL statements through. So we have engine.connect, and also down here we have engine.begin. The main difference here is your engine.connect, you have to commit your changes to the database. So it has automatic rollback. So it'll roll back your transaction if you don't commit here. Now, engine.begin is different in that it automatically commits anything that you run as far as queries. So it's like auto commit. And that's why you see here in the code, I've noted engine.connect has the auto rollback and then engine.begin has the auto commit. And back to the docs once again, if you scroll down here, you'll see we have other statement execution. So one thing we're gonna wanna definitely do is fetch the rows from our database. So this code is pretty much copied verbatim over to our script and it's gonna allow us to kind of go through each row and print out the values in each row. And that's what you're seeing here in this block of code code. But first, before we go there, we got to figure out what are all the columns in our data table, because what SQL does is it adds an ID column if you don't kind of specify that, you know, when you're creating your data table. So as you can see, what that block does is it tells you all of your column names for your table. Now you're able to refer to all of the column names when you're printing out all of the data. So what this next block here does is it selects all the data from your table and then it prints out all of the data. And as you can see here, we have all of our columns and then all of our corresponding values. So that's how you can query the database and then print out all the results. Next, what I have here is a drop table command. So this is gonna allow you to drop a table and then it'll automatically commit it to the database. So now that we've dropped the table, when I go to query all of the rows in the table, there is no table. So it'll give you this error here. And so we've successfully dropped that table. And then lastly here, I have engine.dispose. It just closes all your checked in database connections. They really go in depth in the docs. So I would suggest checking that out, but let's quickly just make up the table again real quick. So it really only takes just a couple lines of code. We have this to SQL, and then we have our query here that just confirms everything in the table. And as you can see, we have all of our data here in our SQL table and we made a database just like that. Bam, and there you have it, fam. You got your pandas data frames inside of your SQL database. You're ready to host it to the cloud or hook it up to your Flask app. Whatever you wanna do, the choice is yours. Hopefully you've been safe out there in these markets. They're getting crazier and crazier by the day. If you like the content, let me know what you think in the comments. Leave me a like and subscribe to join the finance family. We're growing, it's, it's really awesome to see. All right, stay grinding out here, fam. Let's go get these bags.